with you and offer you my deepest sympathy for the recent atrocities your people have suffered. I appreciate that many of you are probably in shock, in particular witnessing the reaction around the world where people welcomed and celebrated those callous murders. And in some ways it's a sad indictment of our moral bankruptcy as a society when people respond with glee to rape, murder and uh, uh, torment of, of innocent people. But in spite of this, please know that you are not alone. We are with you and more importantly, I believe that God is with you. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2 says, But thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. I don't stand with Israel out of a blind or a misguided sense of loyalty, but because I love God and it's therefore natural that I would love God's people, the Jews. And also because I appreciate true diversity, democracy, and decency. Diversity because Israel is a nation where Christian, Jew, Muslim, atheist, and everyone in between have equal rights, can worship freely, and live at peace with each other in spite of their differences. And in a world as divided and polarized as ours, surely this is a good thing. And while we may not always agree, we don't have to attack, malign, cancel, or try to destroy or kill each other. The problem with our modern world is we say diversity, but we mean conformity. But surely Israel is a nation that truly aspires to include and empower all of its citizens in spite of its diverse religious and cultural landscape. For you see both Arabs and Jews in positions of authority in Israel. Are there tensions? Of course there are. There's the never-ending pressures at the Temple Mount and constant efforts of UN and NGOs and activists to demonize and undermine Israel's very right to exist. Certainly the disrespect by some of the ultra-Orthodox towards Christian pilgrims or sites is an ongoing source of tension and also simply serve to confirm the deep-seated suspicions and prejudices that some may already have against Israel and the Jewish people. But in a city that means so much to so many people of different faiths and none, I think it's important to acknowledge that the actions of a minority don't represent the majority. And yet sadly at times, it seems through the Western world that we seem so eager to believe the very worst about Israel and the Jewish people. And so, if diversity truly means doing your best to include rather than exclude varying viewpoints, beliefs and cultures, I personally believe that Israel does remarkably well. And secondly, democracy, because Israel ultimately is the only true democracy in the Middle East. And if we still value it, and at times I wonder, then we should stand with them when they're under attack from anti-Semitic, anti-democratic forces, because from the river to the sea is the very opposite of democracy. Fact is, it's genocide. And last week we saw the brutal application of that apocalyptic vision. We saw Eisengruppen style ethnic cleansing of innocent men, women and children, fathers, mother, fa fathers murdered, women raped and kidnapped and little babies beheaded in their cots, along with people being burned to death. And so I would simply say to the Irish politicians, journalists and celebrities who regularly condemn and rail on Israel, unfair, unfairly calling it an apartheid state, offering their opinion from the same safe comfort of five and a half thousand kilometers away, they need to come out and either publicly condemn or condone the actions of Hamas. Because having a Palestinian flag and free Palestine on your bio has consequences, so own it. Because the barbaric acts of last week were of no surprise to any of those who have taken time to read the Hamas charter. When they say that they along with Israel want to literally wipe Israel off the, the map, and Western liberals say, well, what do they really mean? This is the utter height of stupidity. It means they want to kill Jews. And therefore, it's disingenuous to act like the border was built for no other reason than to inconvenience or humiliate the inhabitants of Gaza. It was there to save lives of Israeli people. And last week demonstrated what would happen if it was not there. Carnage, death, and destruction, ISIS style. And thirdly, decency. Because the difference between Hamas and Israel is ultimately one of decency. One kills deliberately and indiscriminately, 
and celebrates the loss of human life, even that of their own people whom they recklessly endanger, using them as human shields, while the other take life only as a very last resort. Because life is a core value of the Jewish people. And how do I know that? Because I've read your book, Deuteronomy 13, verse 9. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You see, Hamas could have chosen life instead of living in luxury penthouses in Qatar, plotting and directing terrorist activities, spending hundreds of millions digging tunnels and uh, making rockets. They could have spent it on roads, hospitals, schools, and the welfare of their own people. Instead, they chose hate and death. And let me say this, any Jewish or Palestinian person losing their life is a tragedy. And I'm praying for both sides in this conflict. But it is dishonest to pretend that Israel and Palestine are somehow engaged in a tit for tat. They're not. This attack on Israel was deliberate, intentional, and unprovoked. And yes, you may respond, but Israel occupied their land and hold the Palestinian people ransom. That is a lie. The Jews are the indigenous people to the land of Israel, and you have to deny reality, ignore archaeology, and rewrite history to deny the direct and unbroken connection of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, a connection that goes back three and a half thousand years. The truth is this, Hamas don't want land or a state. They want the complete annihilation and destruction of Israel. And even though as a pastor, I abhor violence and war. Israel has every right to respond with force for every self-respecting nation that wants to survive must reserve this option, if only as a last resort. Because to defend itself and its people against attack, at times this may be necessary. The Holocaust is a warning to Israelis and Jews about what happens when they leave their protection and safety to others. Because naivety is not an option. Singing John Lennon's Imagine or Don't Look Back in Anger won't return the hostages to their families. Ecclesiastes 3 and 8 says there is a time of war and a time of peace. I think it's interesting that the Bible puts a time of war preceding a time of peace because unfortunately I believe the time has come for Israel to face their enemies. But while the loss of life is inevitable in a war, it's clear this has never been the aim of Israel. And let me say this, being pro-Israel doesn't mean that I understand, agree with, or endorse every decision made by the government of Israel. Of course, I'd agree with many dis- dis- I disagree with many decisions made by my own government, but in a free country, you are permitted to do this. And the fact that you have an imperfect government making imperfect decisions does not delegitimize your nation or people. Nor does loving the Jewish people mean hating the Palestinian people. God loves and has a purpose for both Palestinian and Jew. And so certainly, personally, my heart is saddened to see any father lifting a dead child or to see any home or city being destroyed, Israeli or Palestinian. And yet, this is what is happening directly because of the nihilistic, anti-Semitic policies of Hamas, an openly terrorist organization that seems to have widespread support among the left here in Europe. And it's, it, it's really disturbing to see academics, politicians and journalists justify or at least downplay the murder of innocent people by using terms like resistance or freedom fighters, decolonization or uprising. York University in the United States, their student union this week made a statement saying resistance against colonial violence is justified and necessary. I mean, justified and necessary. Look at what happened last Saturday. Murder is murder, no matter what euphemisms you use. And just because someone is wearing an Israeli soldier's uniform doesn't make them a legitimate target to murder, rape, or kidnap. It is evil. And we need to call it what it is. Because that is somebody's father, or mother, or son, or daughter. And again, let me say this. As we stand outside the door, if you are an elected representative or journalist who can't condemn this brutality, then you need to resign. Because clearly, much of this anti-Israel sentiment is actually anti-Semitism. BDS and anti-Zionism is simply a flag of convenience 
for people to express their hatred of Jews in a politically correct manner. And so I'm a pastor and I apologetic, un unapologetically look at life through the lens of faith, freedom and family. Faith is my foundation and so much of what I believe love and live by has come to me through the Jewish people. And I'm forever grateful that to the Jew was committed the oracles of God. As a Christian, I feel a certain affinity with and love for the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. And the Bible commands me in Psalm 122, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And by implication, if we must pray for Jerusalem, we must also pray for the nation and people that have claimed Jerusalem as their capital for the last 3000 years. Freedom is a sacred gift purchased in blood by previous generations and yet its light can be extinguished if we choose to neglect it because of laziness, cowardice or stupidity. Martin Luther King Jr. said, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. Western nations that choose to ignore the crowds of its citizens chanting death to Israel and gas the Jews celebrating the brutal murder of innocent people are betraying the very values they say they stand for. And so I'm here speaking up for Israel because I must, because our silence in the Western world in the face of growing anti-Semitic hate is an indication of our failure to stand up for what is right and good. And to ignore the plight of Israelis is a betrayal of our own fundamental values and, an indi and, and, and is an indication and a clear indication of our cowardice and moral, moral bankruptcy. Israel is as ever the canary in the coal mine. Mm. People celebrating in the streets of our cities is a warning that we have lost our way. Faith, freedom and lastly family. I'm a husband, happily married for 24 years. Hopefully my wife feels the same way but <laughs> I sometimes think she got the short end of the stick. <laughs> but I'm the father of five beautiful little children family is everything it's a tremendous privilege to be a parent and like many parents i have deep concern about the world our children are growing up in as a father of two girls i have an image of two young ladies burned forever in my mind and i believe it'll be there till my dying day one young girl thrown half naked in the back of a pickup with her legs broken and another dragged out of the boot of a car clearly having been sexually assaulted i, I can't unsee that those images haunt me. I think every father and mother saw their very worst nightmare in that moment. And that is why I have to stand here today. Ecclesiastes 3.7 says, there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. Let me say this, the time for us to speak has come. see videos of men and women celebrating and justifying these heinous acts in cities all around Europe, America, Australia and Canada was beyond disturbing because to celebrate murder, rape and kidnap requires a denial not only of the humanity of those who suffer but of our own humanity. I mean Europeans of all people should understand what happens when a society dehumanizes the Jews and so take warning. I believe this is the time to stand up and be counted. My concern is that we are being weighed in the balances as a society and found seriously wanting, particularly regarding our treatment of Israel and the Jewish people in general. We can choose to look away, but we cannot pretend that we didn't see or know. Today it's Jewish families, but tomorrow it may be ours. And taking the attitude of, it's not my problem, it's thousands of miles away, is a very short term strategy. Because if we won't stand up for freedom, democracy and human rights there, we won't stand up for it here. Today it's Jewish families being hunted down and being killed. Tomorrow it may be Christian or Hindu or Muslim or atheist. You may not be religious, but it's beyond debate that Israel and the Jewish people have had a huge influence on so much of what we call and cherish as civilization. It's my belief that we owe the Jewish people a great debt one that we can never repay. And if we abandon or ignore them in their time of need, we are doing them a great wrong. And so if you believe the convenient lie that... And so if you believe the convenient lie that Jewish people have no right to live in the land of Israel, 
a land that they're indigenous to, with a connection that goes back thousands of years, confirmed by history, archaeology, and the Bible. It is a lie that may be used against you later on down the road. Who is to say that your children may be thrown off their land? Because once you accept the proposition that certain people are unworthy to live in certain areas because of their uh, ethnicity or nationality, uh, genocide or ethnic cleansing becomes an automatic possibility. A possibility that sadly was realized last week when terrorists slaughtered innocent people simply because they were Jews. And so Western liberals and politicians and journalists pretending that it's just a chant. The line, Palestine will be free, means free of Jews by literally all means necessary, but they will fail. Fascists always do.